that is an all important memorial. in the careers we think of the Mustang largely as one of the outstanding fighters of the Second World War. But it was an outstanding fighter in the early part of the Korean conflict too. And this very Mustang that we see before us, today named Miss Velma, is itself representative of the French role in the Korean conflict. of a single-seat P-51D at North American Aviation Plant in Dallas, Texas. It was one of the last Mustangs to roll off that particular production line, and there's evidence that it served with the 45th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron of the U.S. Air Force at Kimpo Air Base in South Korea from September 1951 during the Korean War. There were a couple of reconnaissance units equipped with Mustangs during that conflict. that uh, flew mas Mustangs during the Second World War would use those skills that they had learned in action in the jets of the period as well because the principles remained pretty much the same or indeed possibly still in Mustang indeed so yeah. Yeah. it wasn't until January 1953 that the final remaining US Air Force F-51 Mustangs were withdrawn from service in Korea as the unit prepared to transition to the Sabre final pass then from the Korean War veteran CF-51D in Korea by the South African and the Royal Australian Air Forces. All those years ago. And it was a great delight to talk to him as he uh, you knows that the air is about to be stunned. Mark their targets with phosphorus or smoke rockets. They also carried out long range reconnaissance of enemy supply routes. There are many tales of the Mosquito Squadron from 6,147 tactical control attacked by a communist flown Yakovlev Yak 9 fighter. Powering this aircraft. The first prototype was actually powered by two of the Frank Whittle designed Rover built W 2B engines, but problems meant that the fifth prototype Meteor was actually the first to fly on the 5th of March 1943. That aircraft had two Halford H 1 power plants, that being the unit that was later developed into the de Havilland Goblin. It's the two-seat trainer variant, the Meteor T7 that we see. This became the standard jet trainer in the RAF's advanced flying schools. It was subsequently painted in the Chinook paint shop at RAF Odium in Hampshire and ferried to its new base at the excellent air base facility at Coventry Airport on the 24th of August. And fittingly, members of Meteor Flight were there to greet it, for it was they who set the aircraft on the road that's now led to it making its display debut here at Duxford. It's one of four Meteors airworthy in the UK, Air Atlantique's NF-11 Night Fighter being one of the others, and then there are the two T-7s used by Martin Baker for ejection seat trials.
around forever and a day. It's, it's guys who are deemed, as they go through training, to be fit enough to become instructors on their first tour, not just from the sort of aircraft handling point of view, but from the temperament point of view and everything. And so, yes, just a handful are taken out of the system each year to do their first tour as a creamy flying instructor. So what would the Takano instructor be looking for in a student? Uh, all sorts of things, obviously the ability to handle the aeroplane uh, and to uh, absorb all the instruction that, that he or she is given throughout the, uh, the year that they are with us. But it goes way beyond that. that one of the main things that, that the, the assessment is being done is how much ability they have to, to think outside a purely flying the aeroplane, how much potential there is there to operate the aeroplane as a, as a war fighting machine, basically. It's not just the aircraft handling, it, it goes goes well beyond that. Looks like Dan's able to get much of his full display in today, doesn't it? In spite of the slightly lower cloud base than we had earlier. Yeah, no, it's fine. Oh, yeah, These two together is a great photo opportunity here. transport aircraft available for the US Air Force.
uh, New Mexico. So and it was based at March Air Force Base for about three years or so till it was superseded by the E model and it reverted to the California Air National Guard where it spent the rest of its flying life on various units. Mark's flying it today between three and 350 knots in order to keep it within sight uh, of, of everybody here without exceeding the 4G drop tank limit. 